filters are applications of signals, components, and circuits. You can characterize filters as passive filters or as active filters. That means passive filters only contain resistors, inductors, and capacitors, whereas active filters also have active elements like transistors or operational amplifiers to add some gain to the circuit. Furthermore, you can distinguish between the order of filters. The order is basically the same as the order of the transfer function of the filter. So that's the highest exponent of the complex frequency S that we have in the transfer function. Let's start out and have a look at passive filters first, and especially of the first order passive filters. Before we dig into the circuits, let's have a look at the terminology that is used in conjunction with first order filters. The Greek letter tau is often used as the characteristic time constant of a filter. And then you have a corner frequency, Fc, which relates to tau by this equation. So the corner frequency is 1 over 2 pi times the characteristic time constant. And again, we also have the angular corner frequency, which is simply the corner frequency multiplied by the factor of 2 pi, and then certainly also the complex corner frequency, Sc, where you multiply omega with the imaginary number j. A specific point in the transfer function is where the transfer function gain, the amplitude of the transfer function, is down by minus 3 dB. And that means that the signals are divided by a square root 2, which means that half of the power of the signal is left compared to the maximum that you can get through that filter. The passband of a filter, typically limited by the corner frequency or the corner frequencies, depend on how many you have, is the frequency range where the signal passes through the filter. We will very soon have a look at a low-pass filter, and that means the passband in a low-pass filter is, as the name indicates, below the corner frequency. And vice versa, the stop band is where the filter blocks, where the filter doesn't let the signal through to its output. And for example, for a low-pass filter, that is all the frequencies above the corner frequency. For engineering estimations, the asymptotes of the filter transfer function are often used to make a simple representation for this specific filter characteristic and have an estimation of that filter behaves. A low pass is one of the two filter characteristics for passive first order filter. It can be implemented either with a resistor and a capacitor as in the left hand side here, or a low pass can also be implemented with an inductor and a resistor as shown on the right hand side here. The transfer function is the same in both cases, but the characteristic time constant is either the resistance times the capacitor as in the left hand side, or it's the inductance divided by the resistance as for the circuit in the right hand side. Now plotting the transfer function of a low pass in a Bode plot gives this result here. We have the pass band area up to the corner frequency here, which is in the middle of the diagram. And then we have a look at where the action is two decades below and two decades above. The stop band of the filter is above the corner frequency and continues all the way up to infinity. At exactly the corner frequency, the amplitude is minus 3 dB down and the asymptotes, the blue lines here, have their corner. That's why it's called the corner frequency. Furthermore, the phase is turning down by minus 45 degrees, which is coming from the single pole located at Fc. In the passband, 
that is at frequencies below the corner frequency and for the implementation with the resistor and the capacitor the capacitor's impedance is close to infinity the lower the frequency is the higher the impedance of the capacitor which is 1 over j omega c and therefore we would have all the voltage coming from the input towards the output across the capacitor in the series resistance doesn't really make any difference. The closer we get to the corner frequency, the more equal the impedance of the resistor and the impedance of the capacitor. And at exactly the corner frequency, they are splitting the signal half-half. In the stop band, that is at frequencies above the corner frequency, the impedance of the capacitor drops. It starts to be a short circuit, and the higher the frequency is, the closer we get to a perfect short circuit. So the less signal we actually have at the output, and all of the input voltage is applied across the resistor. The amplitude of the output voltage is falling with minus 20 dB, and the phase of the output voltage is shifted to minus 90 degrees caused by the capacitor. At the corner frequency, the phase is halfway towards those 90 degrees and goes through the minus 45 degrees. This is exactly where our pole is located. A first order high pass can also either use a capacitor and a resistor or a resistor and an inductor. But compared to the low pass, the components are now switched around and the capacitor is in series first and then the resistor later, or the resistor first and then the inductor in parallel with the output. For these circuits, we end up with the transfer function of a single zero at the frequency zero and a pole, which is again located by the time constant tau, which is the same as we had for the low pass, RC in the case of implementation with the resistor and the capacitor, or the inductance divided by the resistance for the implementation in the RL circuit. Now this time we have the stop band below the corner frequency, and the pass band is above the corner frequency. At the corner frequency, the amplitude is 3 dB away from its maximum, which it's going to reach at frequencies going towards infinity. And the phase turned by 45 degrees compared to the 90 degrees it had in the beginning and is approaching zero for frequencies approaching infinity. The asymptotes shown in the background in the blue line are again an engineering estimation, which are straight lines on a logarithmic diagram. Now for low frequencies, below the corner frequency, the inductor has a very low impedance and is shorting all the signal across the output and no voltage is applied over the load. All the input voltage is across the resistor. And in case of the implementation with the capacitor, it's vice versa. The capacitor is blocking all the low voltages as its impedance is rather high and therefore no voltage reaches the resistor, which is in this case in parallel with the load. Approaching the corner frequency, the phase approaches 45 degrees where it started out with plus 90 degrees. And finally, above the corner frequency, in case of the implementation with the inductor, its impedance approaches infinity, as the impedance of an inductor is proportional to the frequency. The impedance is J multiplied by omega multiplied by L, and omega contains the frequency, and therefore all the input voltage would be across the inductor, which is in parallel with the output and the series resistor has a rather low influence.
the phase shift of the transfer function approaches zero.